Hi guys. So last week we saw some pretty scary things in the stock market. And if you're anything like me, just watching the stock market, wondering, is this the indicator for, for a recession? You know, are prices going to go up? You know, it was kind of a nail biter kind of kind of day you know not not knowing what the what the next day was going to bring if it was going to just be a a tiny little slump or if it's going to be something a little more major and i'm glad i waited a, a few a few days to actually um try and do some research and and see what was happening um because it turned out to be just a, a temporary thing and the market did recorrect itself and these are some of the, the news items after the fact. So after people had a few days really to think about things and um, wait for the market to recorrect itself. So I just pulled up some news stories from, um, from Edward Jones. Um, and I really like Edward Jones' perspective. You know, it's historically, um, it's not so bad. You know, the, the market is recorrecting itself. It's got a history of, of volatile things happening about this time of year. Um, and of course, the, the news is going to be um, mostly for the, for the investors, for the people that are worried about, you know, their their retirement funds and, and those type of things. But my perspective is more about what's it going to do to my wallet? You know, am, am I going to be able to buy food at the same price? Those are things that, that worry that worry me from day to day and week to week. So it got me thinking, you know, if this is a recession, if we are going in that way, what can I do? You know, it's not a time to panic, as, as Edward Jones says, um, but it's time really to take a really good assessment of my budget. So I thought, if, if I'm having these thoughts, maybe, maybe you guys are too. So I came up with 10 tips or, or areas that we can look at um, if, there is a, if there is a recession to kind of prepare. So um, using your car less, that's cer certainly one thing you can do. Um, consolidating your shopping trips, using DoorDash or other services, um, even using public transportation. So, of course, all of these items are going to depend on where you are and what makes sense for you. Um, not all those options actually save you money depending on your particular situation and where you live, but definitely take a look at um, using your car less. So working from home, that's a, another area that might be an option for you. Um, my employer allows me to work one day from home. So if, if you do have a job that can be done remotely, definitely ask your employer if at least one day working from home is an option. So the, the perks from that is, you know, some people say they can concentrate better at home. Um, but budget-wise, you might be able to save on things like gas or, or coffee, um, lunch. Um, so there's a few, a few other um, budget-saving perks to working from home. So explore that option with your employer. All right, number three is the morning coffee run. Um, this is definitely a stumbling block for, for me. Um, I actually have a Starbucks right in the building where I work. So very convenient, but it's really easy um, just, to, just to thoughtlessly grab a coffee and maybe even a snack. Um, so if this is a pitfall for your budget as well, definitely take a look if you can cut back to, you know, once a week or um, making it just a special occasion. So definitely take a look there. Number four is brown bagging it, bringing your lunch to work. So um, it's really easy just to get in the habit of just going out and grabbing something easy and escaping the workplace. Um, but definitely give some thought into bringing food from home. 
And it doesn't have to be leftovers. You know, I, I know a lot of people bring their leftovers to work because it's really convenient, but sometimes it gets really boring eating the same thing, you know, for, for dinner and then also bring it for lunch. Um, so definitely think about mixing it up and making lunch um, kind of a, a, a fun kind of kind of adventure with, you know, maybe having cheese or, or fruit, um, veggies or, or dips. Um, just kind of be creative as you as you can be, and I think I think that makes a difference, especially in in my lunches. So um, bring something that you're going to look forward to eating. Okay, cutting down on your vices. Number five, this is really a hard one, you know, because we all have addictions and we have habits and, and cutting down on things like a smoke break or after work drinks. Um, this can be really a hard one. So um, if this is a, a stumbling block for your budget, definitely take a look and find out if you can cut down or there are different ways that you can be social without engaging in in these vices. Um, definitely do a little soul searching and, and see if this is something that you can decrease in your budget or cut out entirely. Number six, meat-free meals. So um, cutting down on the meat is certainly a way to um, ease up your budget a little bit. Having a meat-free Monday is certainly a, a way to do that. So definitely give that a give that a look if that is something that's a um, something that you can cut out. All right, number seven is eating out less. So um, it's really easy to eat out multiple times in the week. Um, and if this is your situation, um, see if you can decrease it. Maybe just going out on on Mondays or, or Fridays. Um, it's definitely a habit kind of thing. So take a look at, at your at your routine and see if you can cut down on, on eating out a little bit. Number eight is shopping from your pantry or fridge. So give your um, weekly grocery shopping trip a, a kind of a furlough for one week and see if you can just shop from your pantry. Get creative and save a little bit of money one week. <laughs> Number nine is comparing rates. So take a look at your credit card rates and your insurance rates. Um, do a little shopping around. See if there are cheaper options out there. Even just calling your current company and, and saying, I'm thinking about switching. I'm looking around and asking what, what they can do. And sometimes they'll give you a, a decreased rate or um, some kind of perk to, to keep you as a customer. So definitely make that phone call. It might be easier than you think. All right, number 10 is streaming services. Take a look at your streaming costs, you know, between Amazon and Hulu and, and Netflix. There are just so many streaming options and they all cost us money. So take a look. Um, you might be able to bundle some of your streaming services to, um, to, um, to save your, yourself some, some money and um, even take a look and see what you're actually using. You know, if you're not using one of them, maybe it's a good time to cancel, you know, even for a month just to see if, if uh, canceling actually hurts your, um, your viewing at, at all. You know, if you're not using it and you cancel and you find out you don't even need it, that might be a good opportunity just to, just to do, do without that streaming service. So these are my 10 tips of, of things that, that I looked at when I was getting nervous about the economy and just trying to prepare a little bit um, for if, if the economy does go bad. So I would love to hear your, your tips and, and your feedback. Um, I, I love it when we can have an online conversation and um, maybe help each other save a little money and prepare if the worst ever does does happen for us. All right. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great week.